Welcome to the September edition of our Dynamics 365 Roundtable. Today, I'm joined by four very exciting guests from across the D365 Business Central and Finance and Operations world. I'm joined by Renato Fadija from Happening, joined by Zelko Haidinyak from Mr. Specs, Stefan Depressed from Connection, and Stan Rabold, a expert FNO freelancer. Guys, if you can all go around the room and introduce yourself in a few lines, that'd be really appreciated. Renato, we'll dive in with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me in this roundtable. Uh, my name is Renato. I'm a leading business application division in a company called Happening. Uh, Happening is a IT and tech hub for uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, Romanian and European uh, betting uh, software. So uh, here in Happening, we are implementing finance and operations and business central. So we have both tools and we are mostly uh, mostly implementing in-house and then rolling out to different countries and uh, based on our business business needs. Uh, together with that, uh, I'm also responsible for SAP success factors and uh, other, another tools that are not uh, part of today's uh, discussion. And yes, I'm Microsoft MVP for Business Central, and maybe we'll see today that <laughs> I'm more on the Business Central side. And uh, yeah, my career started as an NAV developer, then moved to VC, and then later on to f and So yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, very yeah. Thank you, Jelko. Yeah. Both you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm Jelko. So I started to work with ERP many many years ago with Microsoft ERP when uh, ERP was usually the biggest system in the company, and people didn't have idea what cloud it means. And then during the year, taking part of transformation of ERP, one side from companies when ERP is still taking, you know, the biggest part until. Companies like company where I work today, Mr. Specs, where ERP is maybe just one app between many, many other apps, and then you are creating architecture which which you need. No, and uh, considering, of course, Microsoft ERPs, but some other ERPs, uh, and uh, uh, looking forward to be today here. Yes, my turn. So Stefan Leprest, I've been in, uh, I just calculated it. Uh, I've been in um, the Microsoft ERP for 17 years now, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, started as an accountant, then I actually became a functional consultant uh, working with AX, AX 3.0. Then went to freelancing, started my own company uh, in 2019. In my company, we also started as uh, implementing Business Central. So since 2019, also Business Central. And now I'm part of, I sold the company uh, to Connection last summer. So Connection is a, a bigger Microsoft partner, which offers basically the full stack of Microsoft M365, everything included in the Microsoft licenses, but also now uh, Business Central and uh, FNO all together. So, and next to that, of course, the power platform, the SharePoint, everything basically. And within Connection, I'm now leading the a bit same as Renato, uh, the business application team. So basically uh, the Microsoft uh, software, all, everything, basically. Uh, that's my job today. So thank you for the invitation, David. I want to say that. Let's hope we get a lot of views. Let's hope, let's hope. Stay, and to you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me here. So my name is uh, Steen Rabel. I am uh, from Denmark, the birthplace of uh, D65. Uh, I started with uh, Accept 0.99 way back when in 1999. Uh, I remember the first installation we did was we picked up the golden CD at the Damgaard Data in Birgerød in Denmark. And then we went to the customer. And from there, I have been working in the US and Europe uh, as a developer, solution architect. I worked at Microsoft for some years as a solution architect in the retail space. And now I have my own little company uh, doing freelancing, uh, more or less in at the moment in the Nord Nordic region. Uh, and I, I don't think I could find a better ERP than D65. <laughs> well, uh, 
I suppose we'll have to see by the end of this conversation. Uh, not too sure we'll, 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 we'll sway 25 years of of the opinion, but uh, oh, no, who no, knows? No. Renato and Jelko may be very, very persuasive. <laughs> I suppose it, uh, if we just start the conversation, if we could just open it up to the table and say, what are the sort of core differences between Business Central and FNO for, for all our viewers? I think yeah. it's the way that you develop the application and do customization. That's the most different part. I think end of the day, they could solve more or less the same tasks, uh, except for as far as I know, uh, business citizens do not have uh, production uh, and planning and so on. No, oh, it it has. Yeah, uh, yeah it has manufacturing yeah. model, uh, and so. So we are we are also on that side uh, that we have manufacturing, mm -hmm. uh, but also what I would add that it's a bigger big difference is the licensing. Yeah. I mean, if you start mm -hmm. from the beginning, uh, when you want to sell some license, you know you will find yourself in a different F and O uh, Category. circle of config configuration and uh, of the license, and mm -hmm. not maybe even know that you are using some type of license. <laughs> Uh, versus business central having it much more simpler. You have a central premium team member, and and that's it. Yeah. But the thing is, with FNO, you need uh, to start with. You need at least twenty licenses. Yeah? Exactly. So the cost price of that is already a big difference in relation to business central, where you can just start with one, one yeah. license. But I think uh, if I compare the two, uh, I think functionality wise, so yes, there is production of course, uh, and there is also a little bit of planning a little bit of MRP. Um, so functionality is a big difference. What I always compare is intercompany capabilities. That's one thing. I think uh, intercompany capabilities in FNO are more out of the box because FNO is running on one, one database. Uh, it's one different legal entities on one database. Well, if you have multiple countries inside, multiple localizations, in, well, Business Central has different databases. So that's a bit more a, a challenge in that expect i think that's that's one of the bigger things and next if i can continue i mean business central runs if i maybe i'm not using the correct words words but what i'm calling a, a public cloud of course within microsoft but you have no say in performance or or any settings of that cloud well in fno you basically give your estimations of consumptions to microsoft and you can define your uh, capabilities of your azure um, along the way, I think that's that may big difference. There is there is maybe one more aspect. Depends whom you ask. Who, what's difference? No, <laughs> many many customers they are they are saying you know if you are SME like small mm -hmm. medium then for you it's uh, business central and then you have enterprise level like some another ERPs you mm -hmm. have. Uh, FNO and it is a lot of about scalability, no. And if you are a company who needs really big scale, and you would like maybe to focus on your business and not maybe take care about scalability on your own, then what customers are saying, okay, this is I'm then I'm candidate for FNO, no. And there is there there is one more, let's say maybe meet what it's what it's uh, in the market present maybe maybe again between uh, users no they are saying you know if you have if you have bc then probably you will get a lot of customizations you can ask for it if you are buying fno then by the by default this is not made for heavily customizations and you as a company you would like buy versus build no and and then you will buy and you would like to use what you have. And then you would like to maybe build uh, what you don't have in the FO. You would like to build around because it takes time. No? And uh, what is still uh, feedback if you if you buy uh, BC, uh, then uh, even, even uh, society, community, they're more eager to uh, go into customizations and there may be made solution for your needs if this is required i'm not sure if 
F and O cannot be customized. Uh, I mean, uh, I have been working with customization for the last 25 years. So, uh, they, of course, Microsoft encourage uh, customers to stay on standard as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But I, in all my years in this ERP world, I have never seen a single installation that did not have a single customization. All F and O is the implementation has some kind of customization. Mm -hmm. So this, this uh, what, what yeah. is what this, this is correct, no? And this is I think super hard to implement ERP without customizations. Every customer is almost different, but there is still you know understanding that if you already have so big investment, no, and this is I would say when we can talk later about investments, you would like still to get as much as you can out of the box. You would like to have, you know, what you are buying and maybe not uh, not mix yourself into your specific requirements. Let's go full of standardization as much as you can. But to agree what you said, of course, you will always have. But it's just feedback that uh, it's, uh, let's say, longer trip to do this in F and O versus, uh, versus BC. It's a understanding what usually customers are saying. Now, if someone would like now to come to you and to say, okay, I'm Microsoft partner, I would like to, uh, no, you need ERP, let's see what you need. And then you can maybe see two, two branches. Even this is today, even I would say it's getting less and less difference, how they are accessing to customers uh, and how you can shape both products to majority of the customer, but still there is kind of direction. No? Okay, I mean, when we speak about, uh, Jacob, you mentioned that small and medium uh, businesses are for BC and enterprises are for F and O. I mean, I, I would say that here, usually when the people, when we say this phrase, and when we see that it is like, okay, I have, I don't know, 100 employees, and I am, I don't know, enterprise in, let's say, my region, where I'm, where I'm coming. But, uh, you know, in US, this is like small and medium, or, I mean, this is small or my, micro uh, company. And here I would say that the biggest uh, ch uh, challenge that we need to face is like complex of the process. And then this is this will trigger if you are small or medium or enterprise. Because if you have some long processes uh, that are standardized, uh, I would say that this will mean that you are like big enterprise uh, organization rather than let's say smaller, smaller company that has only invoicing or something like that. I would say, yeah, good, good, good explanation. It's mostly a question about complexity and scalability. You know, if you can fit all your needs with BC, why you would choose something else? No, if you're coming mm -hmm. to real enterprise level on any kind of level, which is working worldwide, then, then you will already think, you know, and usually they are saying that scalability has big price. No, and if you would like to buy scalability, uh, on the enterprise level, then you will probably think twice, no? In, in, in which directions uh, you're going, but Renato, you said, no? Uh, yeah. One of the difference. And I think that one more thing which we was facing a lot as well, and really this is, this is discussions, this is really on the higher level defining strategy, it is time, no? Time to market. And, and how, when do you see first effects of implementation product E or B? No. And some companies, you know, like they would like to see, they even maybe don't have enough resources after six months. Some of them, they are totally free to go into project with, with several years from financial point of view, but from the time as well. And this is, this is, this is pretty specific to customer, uh, what they would like to have. And this is actually, for the, for the ERP, this is one good side because people understand more and more that you can't just go to ERP and to say whatever you will buy now, I would like to have in one week. If you are not small organization, if you're not out of the box, you will still need to put their effort. The biggest you are uh, and you would like to cover may, maybe your, your core processes or even have even patterns. No, I would like everything have standardized how much you would like to need to change you before even going into the direction of implementing ERP. 
uh, and then starts all game. No, am I for B C? Am I am I am I for for F and O? But I think that it it's equal to both B C and F and O. If the customer wants a lot of customization, you cannot get it very fast. Uh, and and if the customer is willing to go out of the, with uh, out of the box functionality. I think BC and FNO are equally fast to implement. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I I cannot speak for development of BC, but I I would say that development deployment on BC and FO, FNO, I don't think the time is so different in, in doing customization. It's so so yeah. it's more like a, but yeah. they it's like you say, uh, they, they say, when they ask me how much time does it take to implement BC and how much time does it take to implement FNO, then you say for BC, you say average six months, year, depending on your processes, FNO, one to two years. But what's the difference? Not the package. It's the amount of people, the amount yes. of alignments you need to do. So if you take the whole period of an implementation and you look at the different parts of it, then I, I agree with, with Steen and saying like you, the real implementing, developing the system when everything is clear shouldn't take that much more time. No. But the problem is uh, with when they call enterprise level is actually the amount of people in the meetings. Yeah. Uh, because as as soon as you have more than four or five people in a meeting, mm -hmm. you it's very difficult to reach a decision. Yeah. And therefore, yeah. implementation takes longer. Yeah. I mean, and, I would say that BC, maybe you can implement in two weeks, three weeks time. If you have good team, you know, you have knowledge, you know, accountant, what they want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have business. I mean, it's the same for FNO. Yeah. But it's the same. Eh? If you compare, yeah. it's like, what do you need for BC? Oh, you import some customers, some vendors, some products, and basic, and then a ledger uh, account in your office. Same with FNO. That's no difference. No. So that's that's not the biggest time frame. It's indeed more the people and the alignment. And and yes, it's there's more time because why in FNO is just more international, way more cultures, way more different people. Uh, it just takes way more time. And this is probably connected with the company size. No, you really mm -hmm. you have yeah. thousands of the users who need to use. You need to implement in so many parts of the company, even if you would like to be super agile, what, what mm -hmm. you already said, this alignment and everything else, this needs time. And even if some companies would like to combine transformation together with ERP implementation, this is getting even 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 longer. What mm -hmm. what I just noticing for BC, uh, you have group again. It's about size. If you have super big company, it's getting time to prepare even yourself to adopt yourself to book time for all people who can be part there. But I can agree, no, in majority that development time, development time can be similar and probably all interfaces which you are building, again, depends how many you, you need to do. No? Would you do all of them in the Azure or would you do somewhere else? It, it's work which needs to be done. Uh, well, I, th I think I was going to ask about the pros and the cons, but I think we've kind of dove into it really. Um, some of the some of the conversations that I've had in the sort of build up to this have been sort of focused around the different pros and cons that come up quite commonly. I think one you mentioned earlier, Stefan, in terms of sort of intercompany activity. Um, one of the people I spoke to mentioned about he was interested in in, in learning about intercompany trading and then sort of the consolidation of data and the consolidation of the finance and stuff like that. I just sort of want to open it up. Is there a noticeable difference when it comes to sort of business central and FNO? Well, like I said, the intercompany, it's FNO is on one database. So that's easier for automated processes in relation to intercompany. If, and if we talk about different localizations, then in BC, there are different databases. Of course, I mean, there's always solutions to solve it. It's just like, okay, what, what would you do in a BC if you have, let's say, companies in 20 different countries, but you do want to have automated processes? Yeah, you can put EDI in between and just have it automated. Problem solved. What do you do with consolidation if you have 30 or 20 different databases? You, you put a Power BI on top of it. Problem solved. I mean, so there's always a solution for every problem. It's just a matter of what's the best one fitting. 
So when we also have customers that are basically in between the two, yeah, they're like becoming too big is not the word, but they're big, they're growing fast. Do we go for a BC or do we say, okay, we start to implement an FNO, but they're only in two different countries. So what what do we do then? Yeah, they, they both can fit. Yeah. Um, then I'm looking also in, in their future. What What's the plan of the company? Yeah, what's the plan? For example, it's to give you an, an actual example, what if a company has a uh, business central, it has three three different countries and they want to sell one of their countries next year or in two years. You know, it's easier when it's a separate database. You basically sell your whole database to your buyer, problem solved. You know, If it's an FNO, it's the same database, what are you going to do? There's some challenges there. Is that the biggest decision maker? No, but you have to look into the future. Like, is it a growing company or is it stagnating? Is it going to keep going? Is it a family company that you know is going to last for another 20 years and then the daughter or son takes over? You have to take all that into into account. That's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an exercise. Uh, that's something we do um, with our prospects, with our customers. We, we go in, we do the analysis of their processes. We don't think about BC or FNO. We do that at the end in, in when we have all the complexity, like we have one with a, a lot of production, heavy production, maybe some uh, difficult warehousing. Yeah, they're gonna, you're gonna put the pros and the cons. You're gonna be like, okay, in BC, we can also build this, we can extend this, it's gonna cost you 20 days, just saying something, or maybe it's standard in FNO. Which option do you take? You just do the It sounds like, also. Go ahead. Sir. Now it sounds like, for instance, when we talk about complexity, that that of course there's solution f to do in BC. Uh, I was not aware 100% that they have multiple databases for localization and different countries and different companies. But uh, and as you say, well, you just put the uh, Power BI or Power Apps uh, on top. But mm -hmm. again, as soon as you add more components into the to the landscape, you also add cost, you add the point of failure, uh, and moving parts are, yeah, you never yeah. know what, what's going to happen. So, but yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, as you said before, that uh, at the end of the discussion with the customer, you decide on the product. And I, I actually, even though that I'm FNO, I, I totally agree with that. You should find the best tool for the, for the company. And 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 not. Uh, I think Roman also talked about it. It's not about the size. It's about the what is what is the best for this company. Yeah, we have. We I mean we we see both. We see. I think David's mentioned it in the beginning. We see FNO implemented companies going back to Business Central, and the other way around. Yeah. And why? The one is not bigger than the other one. It's just about functionality, complexity, integrations yeah. with other systems, yes or no. Uh, and that's what we do see. And of course, yeah, at some point, also money and licenses, as mentioned before. But we see that movement. And I think, Steen, um, the day that Microsoft decides to have Business Central structurally the same as in FNU, uh, different legal entities in one database, yeah, sorry, but then I will not know anymore what to choose. I mean, that, I mean, it's yeah, it's very close. It's hard to compare. I'm I'm also from origin an FNO or Exapta guy, an FNO guy, but it's more, it's 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 more out of the box BC. It's also automatically links with Outlook. You know, like it's, there's nice features, super nice features that are present today in in the package, which you don't have in AX. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, why not? You know, like, why not? AX, uh, in the past, SSRS reports and everything. NBC, you do the, I forgot the name now, you export it to Word, um, RTLC. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do layout adjustments, you know, like it's just more easier, faster, implements faster. Uh, implements well, faster is not the word, but you can do modifications faster in that sense. But, but again, then I would say if, if, if it comes down to reporting, printing a report and so on, you put on a form pipe on, on top. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I mean, yeah. I know. Then you have yes, again, I mean, solutions. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's uh, that's actually one I see more and more or doc centric or something. Uh, yeah. Because I, I, I think we all can agree that the working with the SSS report is not the easiest part in the world. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, no. Stefan, uh, one question. You now explain how you're working with your customers, no? But do you, and you said that you're covering BC and, and FNO. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we know, no, I know this well, that, that in, uh, for example, production, it's uh, for, for companies who have complex production, I would say BC doesn't fit always. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. We know that if you have, let's say, fulfillment or your warehouses, which, and you would like maybe even to use as VM, as WMS, even your ERP, then in BC, maybe you won't get what you would like to have. And do you have maybe there even some patterns that you are saying, okay, I come into customer and you know, they are really big factory and mm -hmm. then I will immediately go to FNO or you always consider both of them. Um, it depends on the situation again. I mean, we have, we like uh, now real life talking, uh, a customer is, in, is now working on NAF 2016. And we're thinking, okay, should we bring him to FNO or do we go to Business Central? But you can do the question with everybody. I think sometimes customers, they may select already something because they think that's the solution. But I think it's the people, the consultants like us that should advise the customer which way to go. But again, with all the criteria, potential criteria. When I go to a production company, yeah, of course, we're going to go into the details. I'm, I'm not looking at the finance in that sense. You know, finance they both can do the same, you know, finance, you have the regional uh, <laughs> expectations uh, uh, and sales, they can all sell. I mean, to, to simplify words, I don't want to oversimplify it, but of course, if there's production related, yeah, that's for me the key takeaway if you go for FNO or BC. Um, it, it's complexity. It's, um, yeah, it depends on the levels, like of bill of materials and, and that whole thing. I know from BC, you can also run MRPs and it will also propose your purchases and sub sub um, sub productions and outsourcing and everything else. It's more simple. It's simple in a sense. It does what it needs to do. It's easy to set up. You run some processes, but you can just with way more criteria work in, uh, in an FNO. You can add way more criteria to get to that specific result. But again, I think what's the challenge for us is that sometimes uh, customers have, or what they see as very difficult, complex processes. But if you take it back to the bone, you always have to go back to the bone. Then at the end, they're all the same basis. In eh? production is production. Eh? You take two products, you put them together, and you have a, a third one. Again, not oversimplifying things, but um but it's it's yeah something yeah i don't know it's um it's it's a hard one i mean but i think we still need to guide the customers but for me when you say production complex production then i'm thinking about a lot of transactions and then i'm more thinking about an fnu also in, in relation to performance i think that's a, a big one because bc can do its thing but you know when you stress it too much you'll feel it faster than when you do it with an FNO, and as what I said in the beginning, in an FNO implementation, you can request certain minimum amount of transactions uh, per minute or whatsoever with Microsoft, so you have a, a decent setup. Um, so I think you have to look at amount of transactions you process and, and integrations, and yeah, I think that's one 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 important thing. Chilk, I imagine your system process is quite a high number of, of transactions and stuff. Is the stuff you've done to mitigate performance issues or is that just something you've had to consider as things have moved on? Hmm, I was I was yeah I was asking all those questions because in the in the companies let's say who has high really high number of transactions now and where you are considering that um that that you have many other systems now and you actually live from transactions you would like to log everything you would like to track everything you would like to have out of the box then what you starting you're starting building your own solutions around you're building microservices you're using a lot of stuff there i think there are different reasons you are you're doing there because of uh, scalability because of load maybe because of even you have joy to start completely something new maybe because you you were you were in kind of really big company not and then you saw how they are doing and you would like to copy it. 
And then you're coming maybe to question, no, that you are building a lot. Uh, and what you, Stefan, uh, what you, Stefan mentioned, no, that you would like actually go back to the basis. You, you as a company, you would like, you know, you would like to use product, mm -hmm. which you can buy maybe, which it's enough scalable and you would like to build, not product anymore. You would like to build value for your customers. Mm -hmm. Maybe shift focus now taking care about performance and taking care about observability 24 seven, everything with events, with our own resources versus let's go maybe to something, what it is enough scalable, what we can just, you know, if it's need scale up, scale down and move this out of our focus and take care that our customers and providing value to company and to customers with maybe benefit. And I know what you, what you David asked now, a lot of transactions and this is, you're, you're getting performance now and you can solve them. I don't doubt and we're solving them and we will solve them and it's just that you come one moment that you ask yourself, okay, why people are building software for the saying by, by default, even maybe it's not always correct. I'm just for the enterprise level. I am for the smaller. And maybe you then coming to conclusion, okay, what it means scalability, you check what other companies are doing, how they're showing scalability and always you have, okay, people are saying this is expensive. No, if you need to scale, then you have expensive stuff. And this is what all my questions are coming that, that, uh, that especially today, no, where, where you would like to be fast in providing the value, where you need to be, where you need to change yourself all the time, where to put your focus, no? And when I'm talking with different, I would say, even companies and, and peers, uh, some of them, they are thinking in this direction. If they have a lot of transactions, they have the same issues. And some of them, they are, they are, uh, you know, just, just maybe they, they, they don't have that kind of need and they don't worry about it. And, and usually it's going mostly what they're saying, simplicity, take or make simple as possible as you can. will, mm -hmm. and then you can scale, make simple, mm -hmm. you will scale easier. No, and just, just, just therefore I, I'm trying to, and even Microsoft is saying and different, differentiate, you know, still, okay. I have a lot of transactions, a lot of, Maybe I think that I have complexity, but you're right. No, many companies don't have it's just personal, it's just personal uh, uh, view. Uh, maybe already target and what future brings to mm -hmm. something bigger. And you maybe sometimes need to go back. You mentioned as well, uh, but uh, on the other side, uh, just 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 putting focus on the systems. Maybe it's not your product. No, maybe your focus should be how you can help company. Mm -hmm. If you are inside of the company or, or even, mm -hmm. or even if you are consultant, you're coming to the company, every company will be happy to provide value. No, mm -hmm. not just solving status quo, providing additional value. And this is what everyone asks. And I see mostly this in this whole e-car, uh, electric car industry who's fast mm -hmm. no? and who can, and who can take care about innovation about bringing something new better faster stronger no? mm. and this it is what maybe one one is not pros and cons no where company would like to put focus no you now have customer customer needs now how do they see themselves in the future and yeah. uh, and there are, are different companies but i think if you if you compare i feel a change in in how you implement regardless of which ERP. I see a change in the in, in over time in how you implement an ERP with customers. When I started, it was more like, you know, you're a consultant and you work for a partner and the customer comes in, I want a new ERP, it doesn't matter which one. You go there, you sit down with your customer and you say one question, what do you want? Yeah, and then they start like talking and talking and boom, it explodes. Yeah, and you build and you start building and that's where it goes wrong. But that was what I saw in, in the beginning of my career, a bit of the methodology that was used. But that's what I'm saying now is, and those companies, they, they grew like this. You know, a lot of them have different packages for this process and that process and all linked and exceptions on top of exceptions. And of course, it's difficult. 
Yeah, of course, it's it's very complex in that matter, and that's where I'm saying that now how how we approach it, and I think that's also a bit more the the Microsoft way. I've been subcontracting for Microsoft as well. Is we go to a customer and say, look, this is the process. You know, this is how it works. This is a sales process. This is how you deal with it in AX or BC. This is the production process. If you have a external production or only internal whatsoever, this is the process. Now you tell me where you see that you cannot match this process. Yeah, that's that's a whole different angle. Yeah, so the customer needs to tell you why Business Central or AX doesn't fit them. And second, next to this, uh, when they do say, okay, fine, we need some deviation here in the process, what we do is basically we make a change document or whatever you want to call it, but I want to see also what's the return of investment on that change. So I want to see if if we need to build something for you, and I'm happy to build, but I would like to see that whatever 10 or 20 or 100 thousands of euro it's going to cost you, What's the return for you as a company? Is it worth it? Is that deviation mostly some, um, yeah, something very unique? It's not a general process, some deviation that we need to build. Is it worth it, that kind of money? Is it on the long term? Does it bring anything back? And I think that's a, a different a different approach with I see, which I, what I see over the years. Uh, and also that's, that's what Steen in the beginning also mentioned, like, Microsoft wants you to go standard. They want to have the automatic updates, so they don't want you to do a lot of changes. And yes, there will be always changes. And we're not talking about extra fields or this or that. We're talking about process changes. Of course, they don't want it. Uh, and I think that's why I'm taking it back to basics. And you will see that 95% is standard processes. Eh? But it's the 5% that messes up the other 95%. But if you look at it uh, from, I mean, as, as a freelancer, I've been working with different uh, partners uh, over mm -hmm. the years. And as you say, uh, they ask the customer, what do you want? Mm -hmm. In, instead of saying, okay, this is what we, what the system can provide. Uh, and we can see now some of the bigger partners that start to struggle because customers are now finding out that we don't need this but they still need to sell the hours. Uh, and then sometimes they say, yeah, but this system is easier to implement uh, X, Y, Z because of whatever. And then you, they still get the, the sale of one system. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, 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 I truly believe that, that, that you're right in saying that we need to make it simple and mm -hmm. then try to convince the customer to look at their own processes before they say, do mm -hmm. customization. Yeah. Do you think, and I, I know Stefan, I know you touched on this in your, in your 52 topics conversation of a very similar vein, yeah. the rise of sort of industry specific business central based resources, there's, there's been such a, a rise in over the year across so many different industries. Is, is that sort of one of the big driving forces behind that? Well, I think if you go industry specific, you mean like sector specific, customer yeah. specific, well, the thing is that we ourselves, as connection, we don't have any sector-specific product or development. I think we we start with standard. We show how it works. And we define, okay, this is how it works. And then, of course, when we do feel that there is some deviation, we first go and check on the, the marketplaces uh, where we can download and simplified uh, solutions from partners. And second, uh, third, uh, then, and only then, if nothing helps, then we're going to develop but again, it needs to prove some uh, return on, of investment. Uh, I think that's that's important because we all know when once we start developing, you need to be a good qualified developer uh, to make it really nice and tight and make sure that no other processes are touched because six months down the line, the customer says, hey, I want something else. And then we say, hey, it's standard and it's messed up because the development wasn't done correctly. Um, and then then it starts, of course. So yeah, that's that's our approach. We show how it works standardly. We sh if it's not, we go onto the marketplaces and uh, as third one, we develop. And yes, like Steen said, I mean, there's always development. There's always, and that's I think also a logic because what Microsoft offers is not sector specific. It's general 
matching process for as much companies as possible. Of course, there's always deviation. So there's always some development. Uh, but yes, I see also more development in FNU than in a PC. But then again, it depends on the complexity of the, the customers. But I also think that the regarding the development, when you say that it it uh, it destroys other functionality, I think it's also a little bit about the consultant and mm -hmm. the discussion with the company, where sometimes the consultant uh, say, "Yeah, but, but we need this one, no matter what." And I mean, mm -hmm. I have I have now uh, I have a discussion more or less on a daily basis with with my. Where I work, uh, saying, do we really need this development? Yeah, but it will simplify mm -hmm. this and this. Yes, but if you do like this and this, you have the same results. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yep. okay. But, but but the customer, I, I think that's well. I I, I, can, I don't know how it is in in VC, but I think it's is equal that if the consultant does not strongly advise or support mm -hmm. the process, but bent for the requirement of the customer, then you will have equally number of customizations in both yeah. systems. Yeah, true. For me, I can answer with this uh, simple term, you need a good solution architect. Yeah. In yeah. both in both systems, it doesn't matter. And good knowledgeable consultants that uh, know yeah. the processes and how the industry standard process goes. Because, you know, company can say, okay, I want to produce shoes like this, but then if the whole standard in F and O and B C is like, okay, I want uh, option B, mm -hmm. why not think about changing our process? Maybe we'll be more efficient yeah. with a new process. Yeah. And That's... I would also say that uh, it's also a matter of uh, a strategy where the company wants to see itself and how what they expect from the process as well uh, in the future. Uh, because for example, if we have one 100K transactions per per hour or whatever, I mean, does they, they need to be posted immediately or they can be posted uh, during the night and so on. And customers will always say, I want to po be posted right of now, course. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there are, you need to understand why uh, it is right now or how can you... Yeah, but that's sure. what I mean. That's that's where you see a shift in, in the job consultant. It's not just execution. It's more you have to advise and, and define uh, the solution at the end, but especially advice is not just executing. And I refer to a solution architect because yeah, he or she uh, is for me the key person uh, in, in a project. Uh, he or she needs to define if it's technically possible, feasible, if it's wise or not, um, yeah, and or workarounds uh, or other solutions. Uh, yeah. They are they are saying that success of implementation depends of how good consultants are because they are this proxy to customer, no? And as as they are better, then success is probably better. And even even no, this is, is switch again. Then solution architect are now doing more front end work together with with consultants just to fine tune solution as as fits to both sides. Mm -hmm. Do we think that's maybe one of the reasons why historically the, the numbers of projects have failed so much because the way the system's been built and, and, and partners have sort of like like what you were mentioning, Stefan, delivered what they wanted as opposed to forcing the conversation it's, that uh, really wants. Yeah, once you go you go down that route, you need to have a plan and an, an end. And that's sometimes the problem. It just keeps going. You keep developing and then more and more and more and then the budgets are over and then and then what? I mean, that's what I see in the past. And there have been big budgets spent on uh, <laughs> on big projects. Uh, yeah. And then you're sometimes asking, but why? Why is it so why is it so hard? Like yeah. But well, again, some some companies have difficult and uh uh, big, big different, uh, difficult processes. Eh? Don't get me wrong, um, but yeah, once you start developing, uh, you have to be very careful. I mean, and again, we'll still be developing, eh? but again, you have to have the the gatekeeper and the solution architect. Uh, uh, and mostly, if if I talk Microsoft way, they mostly have a functional solution architect and a technical solution architect. And then, of course, that is for FNO projects. And then it also explains why they're more expensive. But at the end, it's necessary. Um, 
the gatekeepers, making sure that the project can still be delivered and that it's working. Uh, yeah. There's only one problem with going standard out of the box. That is that we all, all lose our job. Um, yeah, <laughs> maybe. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's new functionality no. coming, and and yeah, it's. I think it's a, it shifts a bit. But you can say that already from like let's say take BC. Right? When I started BC, I never followed any course. I was like, mm, oh FNO, I've been doing FNO for so long. I want to start implementing BC in my company. So what do you do at the night? You open Google, you buy one license. And there you go. You find so many things on BC, so many things. So even now, uh, the customers could do it themselves. They could just go online, buy a license, go for the flow. But it's about time. It's about advice. It's about, yeah, they don't have that time. That's that's why they go external. So I, I'm not sure, Estine, if it's going to happen short term. That's what they say from Copilot as well. No? Some jobs are going <laughs> to disappear. Some others are going to come. It's, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be scared to... No, no, I'm not so scared either in reality. But basically, if 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 we follow the advice of uh, both SAP, Microsoft, uh, and so on, and Oracle to go out of the box, then we would only have uh, business consultants. Uh, there will not be any solution architect anymore and developers and so on. I I don't think it will ever happen. But uh, I absolutely agree that the 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 key the key function is the solution architect, and I. I have seen over the last few years that, in my opinion, there's a little bit inflation in the title of being a solution architect. Uh, I have seen people working with, uh, in my area, FNO for one and a half, two years, and then they're all of a sudden solution architect. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I think that's uh, at least a smaller partner they have a tendency to promote people to, for instance, solution architects before they really are ready in order to keep them in the company. Uh, yeah. And and that can also be a little bit uh, of an issue. But, uh, but that's, so, a, that's a salary discussion. Eh? That's the only yeah, exactly. yeah, I agree. I agree. Because, because I mean, I have, I have now been working as a freelancer. Yeah. You know, I don't quite know how many years and uh, I can be a developer or I can be a solution architect. I don't really have to say for me, the title, is not important, mm -hmm. but I, I I can see that I many times I start as a developer on a project, and then I have discussion with the consultants and uh, business process owner and so on, and then they drag me into discussion about solution, and then at the end I actually do solution architect work, which I, and I like uh, all of it, but but it's very important that you have people actually on a lower level, so to speak, mm -hmm. that that knows the system from the ground up uh, and not uh, not only talking about uh, profit and, and uh, making the customer happy. Because, I mean, I have been into many discussions where I say, well, if you do this, you will lose uh, time and money. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but the consultant said, yeah, but but if you if you do this, you will break this and this, for instance. Mm -hmm. So that it's, so that it's maybe one, so what it's happening and what they see from the customer, their expectations a little bit switch because today we have consultants and then we have kind of take roles. No, it can be architect, can be developer. But actually, no, if you would like to go to the simplicity and implement out of the box, what customer needs? Customer needs still, let's call them advisory. There can mm -hmm. be technical, can be business to actually how this fit to their system. And they would like to, to connect data, work with the data. And then you need, okay, how we could connect new ERP and all my stack. What does it make sense? And then you come, the same person, a solution architect, maybe we just have another, another title, but you still will maybe push it more to customer side to consult and actually help customer problems and not maybe so much code. But in the end, customer, Will will need services now. Would you now code, or would you really see how I can now how customer can benefit of the data and push it somewhere else, and then even do great analysis? I think this is this need it's it's getting bigger and bigger, and it's getting bigger and bigger architects who are not just connected to one tech stack because if you are now working just with FNO, 
and customer, okay, okay, then I need to have one for FNO, I need to have one for the Azure stack, I need to have one for, I don't know, everything else. And how great would be that uh, that architects, you know, can maybe, you know, some skills which they don't need just release and just gain new skills and actually help us customers as well. To have great enterprise architect, this is not so easy to find. And then, then no. tell you know, let's don't, don't do this at all. And F and O, let's just use services because it will help you with transformation. You don't like it, just exchange it. But you can't exchange so easily, uh, kind of, I would say, bigger or the smaller ERP. And this is, uh, I think, a lot of potential and co-pilot console in the next five years won't be so, so strong. But that kind of skills, that kind of needs, uh, and whole are they are wanted or something like this. But I agree, actually, it, it would be better that we get good enterprise architects in instead mm -hmm. of a financial solution architect or a trade and logistics solution architect uh, or XX solution architect. I mean, I agree with you that an enterprise art architect is mo it's much, much better than a specific uh, architect. And I, I mean, I also use uh, chat DTP and uh, Copilot and so on. No, but I, I, but I, I don't, I don't think it will replace anybody, because the result you get from these AI, uh, in order, if you blindly use it, you will mm -hmm. fail. Uh, mm -hmm. You, you need to know what you, you need to know what you, what your results should be. Because what what they spit out of uh, information to you is not necessarily the best solution, at least not for now. No, correct. I know. I know that we were we were automizing a lot with LLMs, mm -hmm. our customer service. No, and this is not just that you will turn on one service, even not Copilot will work. This is really work. This is many flows. This is, this is really seriously work, but in the end, you see this move, how actually they're helping you to auto my stuff and how they're helping you even to do things which even people don't want to do. And, 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 and I think it's switch, it's there, push forward, it's happening, but of course it can't replace everything, no? But every year, you know, that it's kind of before was just even in ERP world, no? You didn't have anything. No, now you're starting to have some co-pilot give me some assistance. No, and this is probably will go okay. Help me with analysis. Mm -hmm. But if you now take this bigger picture, and now we can combine like enterprise architect. No, combine even great consultant who would be able to combine process possibility of that kind of co-pilot and maybe kind of future vision. I think this is probably next step for ERP, more what I could be saying, autonomous agents who can help you your activities. And today, even if you would like to automize a lot with LLMs, as I said, it's a it's an effort and automize deployment, everything. It's, re, it's not on the level as you would like to have as kind of tech guy, but it's going, it's solving the problem and I would say future will come, not 100%. We will, we will still be really busy with maybe similar activities, but they will have their, their uh, pet for sure. And I will be happy if they can be bigger role in ERP to helping users. No, if they have questions, please don't ask for level support. Just, just ask for <laughs> how great this will help us. Yeah. But I agree that the uh, LLM is, is really, really nice. However, I have also seen that some companies use these uh, AI robots uh, entirely. Uh, let's, but, but, but I have, I, I agree that the co-pilot in, in FNO is actually quite funny because it can actually help you. Uh, but you also need to, a little bit need to know what you are looking for. Um, it's not that it can give you, I mean, the, as I said, I would, I would say that the input you give will, will also reflect the output, so to speak. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to have to jump in. Sorry, Renato, please go yeah, ahead. I just want to say a co-pilot on FNO. 
even I, I like it. I mean, for example, the vent, one on the vendor card, I always go and check if it's yes. correct, you know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for this nice summarization, but I'm going to validate if, <laughs> if that's correct. If if it's correct that I don't have any overdue invoices uh, on that vendor. Yeah. You have to blind trust the machine. Yeah. Can we? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's I think that's a whole other round table. In fact, my, my previous round table was, was an hour an hour and a bit of just about this. And look, I think I think we can talk for many, many more hours about about LLM's AI and the future of it and where it stands. But we try to keep these limited to an hour. Maybe closing remarks from everyone. Uh, that would be uh that'd be really great. So if you want to start yourself, Renato. Business central versus FNO co-pilot, separate topic. <laughs> uh, for myself, I mean, it depends on the uh, complex uh, process com complexity, and this is where I would like. Then I would like to choose BC versus F and O. As I said, in my organization, we have F and O, even though we don't have a uh, so big comp. I mean, we have the one company, one set of companies that are using Business Central. They use the same processes as one that are using F and O. So uh, now is the question. Do we need that big monster of F and O and can we switch to business central and so on? So that's why I would say that for me, it depends on the complexity of the process and the huge number of users and uh, what you're expecting in the future. So that's for now, but my heart is always with the business central if I need to choose. <laughs> yep. And I'm, I, 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 I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm, I can. I will. I will. I'm more or less on on the same page that you. You should use a tool that fits fits the business. However, I I think that F and O will fit all businesses. <laughs> but you can customize everything. <laughs> <laughs> Come to that world. Yeah. I'm um I'm a more you know I would like to follow simplicity, and then with this achieve scalability, and then if and in the end. Is it is maybe become patterns, no? And then based on your needs, you will then choose product uh, BC or FNO. I see future of both products. I see, and this is again feedback from the many. If you have, and you said Renato, no, you have, if you have a lot of complexity, you have big load on the system. And you would like to have really focus on what come on company product and not take care mm -hmm. so much about your systems, then I will go for kind of enterprise product, this space to, to FNO. If I am not fitting to this term, if I am still growing, but I'm smaller and I'm exploring different stuff, I will go to BC. Why not? I have bigger community. It's easier for me to change. And it's always space to how you can be agile, how you can change easily. No, once you implement enterprise, big software, not so easy. If you're smaller and if you do mistake, you, you can, I suppose you can change easily. So first maybe kind of what you would like to reach, but as again, I'm more, if it, whatever I need to do that it's simple, it's scale and then uh, which software brings to them, but like both of them and I hope Microsoft will maybe make them even better in the future. I just want to add one more thing before I answer the final question. Um, FNO is becoming so big that commercially speaking, you see this Microsoft, what they do, before it was one package, X, FNO, but now they're making it finance, supply chain, project and operations. So in my feeling, they know they've like, they didn't hit the limit, but it's like, on the high ends, we're getting up to the peak of the mountain, you know, and then commercially they're splitting it. And then, of course, you can have a business central and a supply chain for FNO if we're all what they want. That's better commercially for them. So in that sense, I have the feeling that today uh, they split it, commercially speaking, and I feel that Microsoft could be wrong. They can react to as a comment on this video uh, i have the feeling that currently they boost a bit more the business central uh, software package uh, sort to say so yeah i think yeah it's it's i don't know it feels uh, it feels different they have different purposes uh, now to answer the final question uh, david fno or uh, or bc uh, i like them both uh, i have fno at heart Always, always been there. 
always will be. Um, but I do see a lot of benefits in the BC and the interaction with office packages and so on. And like I said before, if Microsoft decides tomorrow to move a BC onto Azure, fully controllable and performance wise, I think uh, it's going to be a difficult, even more difficult discussion uh, than now. Interesting. Thank you all so much for a very, very quick hour. It flew by. Um, I, I learned a lot and hopefully you guys all maybe learned something as well.